So let's run down the rules for quantum numbers one more time and then we are going to apply them in a very classical type of question that you might see on an exam. So there's four quantum numbers. The first one, n, can be any positive non-zero integral value. So one, two, three, four. L is determined by the n values. So the possible values for L starts at zero and goes through the positive integers but cannot be larger than n minus one. So you start at zero, you start counting up until you get to n minus one. That tells you how many possible the L values you have or gives you the possible L values that you can have. M sub L is uh, determined by L and remember that starts at minus L. You start adding a number to it until you get to positive uh, L. And then remember that m sub s, it's still at this point, can either be plus one half or minus one half. Uh, at this point, it doesn't really matter. It's just one of those two. So a classic type of question that you will see is uh, on an exam is you will be given four quantum numbers and the question will be, are these quantum numbers consistent with the rules that we've given here? So what I like to do is start at the left and ask myself the question, does this number follow these rules? So with this first one, uh, it says the n value is equal to two. So n can be any positive non-zero integral value. Okay, so that is correct. L is equal to one. L can be zero or any positive integer not larger than n minus one. So really my L value uh, is in between zero and n minus one. N minus one in this case is one, so L, L being equal to one is actually okay. The M sub L value, the one that's given is minus two. Uh, the possible L values that we can have start at minus L and go through positive L. So here I see a problem. Minus L in this case is minus one, and so uh, for L is equal to one, my possible L val M sub L values are minus one, zero, and one. Here I'm saying that my m sub l value is minus two. So no, um, I know that uh, these quantum numbers are not following the rules that were given. And I know this because for this situation, given n and l, the only possible l values that I can have, or m sub l values that I can have are minus one, zero, and one. So here's another set of quantum numbers. Um, once again, I start at the left. Uh, say, does the n value follow the rules? So n is equal to two. We've already seen that. We understand n can be any non-zero integer. So that's okay. L is equal to one. Uh, with that, the possible L values, you start at zero, you start counting up until you get to n minus one. n minus one in this case is one. So the possible L values for this um, situation would be zero or one. So L is equal to one makes sense. That's following the rules. Uh, the M sub L values are determined by L. So with an L is equal to one, my possible M sub L values are minus one, zero, or one. So an M sub L of minus one is correct. And then my possible M sub L values are minus one half or plus one half. So here, yes, the, the, the rules are followed. So I have a set of four quantum numbers that all follow the rules that were given. So let's do one more uh, here. And once again, I start at the left. N has to be some non-zero integer, uh, integer value. So N is equal to two is fine. Uh, L needs to be uh, starting from zero and going up to N minus one. So for n is equal to two, my possible L values are zero or one. And here I'm saying that I have an L value uh, equal to two. So I know that these quantum numbers that I've given here are not following the, the rules that we've laid out for quantum numbers. So what I do is I start at the left um, and say, do they follow the rules? Determine what are the possible values for certain things and see if they make sense. So here, with an n value of equal to two, the possible L values based off the rules could only be zero or one. Um, I'm trying to assign an L value of equal to two here in this case, and so uh, that's incorrect. So these quantum numbers are not following the rules that we've laid out for quantum numbers.